of America, and, and I understand uh, the resistance of maybe some of the pride that's been manifest or careless, mm -hmm. uh, carelessness or um, exploitation, and some of that has definitely been there, um, but it's also a beautiful nation, just like every nation is and has wonderful attributes, but you have been, um, you have been a, a cheerleader as far as getting the heart of God for the nation. As you know, we are in quite a um, mm -hmm. a critical hour right now. America is in the mm -hmm. balance right now mm -hmm. and God is calling for change. So we have prayer mandates everywhere. I mean, yeah. so many ministries. And by the way, for our viewers, if you have not signed up for the Firewall USA, which is a 24-7 uh, prayer mandate, sign up now. Mm -hmm. Just sign up for any hour of any day of any week, just sign up. And if you can do once a day for an hour, that's great. But we desperately need prayer, um, according to Second Chronicles 7.14, for this nation right now. We desperately need it. We need so much prayer to create a tipping point. But uh, Lana, what is God speaking to you right now about the USA? Is there hope for the USA? Is there a future for the USA? Is there like what yeah. what what are you seeing from the Lord at this time? Yeah, um, I I really believe there is hope for the US, and I I really resonate with those words that you said, Patricia, about um, hanging in the balance, because every time I have lent into the Lord, I'm like God, like what is happening? And I do I have such a heart for the United States, uh, the the Lord has given me, and for the nations. And so when I lent in, I'm like God, what are you saying? And the first thing that He said to me was, Lana, He said, I am awakening my people, and I'm a, I'm awake awakening an army uh, to the authority that they carry and the power of, of unity in intercession and in this place of positioning of God, you know, we're standing in the gap and Lord, we're repenting and the, the cleansing, I, I just see, I mean, there's a worldwide uh, cleansing of the church taking place, but I feel like for the United States, God is, is shaking, he's cleansing the church and he's calling uh, his people into this place to arrive and to begin to decree and to speak what he's speaking and to pray and cry out for the nation. And as I was uh, watching this in numerous encounters, the one thing that I keep feeling so strongly is the Lord saying, I, I am going to demonstrate myself as the Lion of Judah. I keep hearing the roar the of roar. the Lord <laughs> over the nation. Like no matter how many times I go to the Lord and he shows me different things, that is the common theme. And I, so, so I want to encourage people in this hour that yes this is a very important moment in the body of, uh, sorry in the US to pray to intercede to really be in that place of, of cleansing and repentance but I believe that the Lord is saying I am going to roar over this nation and that I, I keep hearing the scripture um, I think it's in Psalm 2 I haven't got my uh, notes in front of me but um, that he who sits in the heavens yeah, laughs yeah and I, I just I Come feel on. like in this partnership right now where God is saying, hey, you know what? This is a very urgent and desperate hour. This is an hour to ascend into that place uh, where you're hearing what I am saying. This is such an hour not to be living uh, on the ground in the sense of living by what you see. The other day, the Lord said to me, um, don't meditate on the media, meditate on the manna. And he kept repeating it over and over again. And so I feel like in this hour, God is saying, hey, you know what Ephesians 2 says? That you live in heavenly places. You are seated in the heavenly places with me. And this is the time to really cry out, to repent, to cleanse, but also to say, God, I'm not going to look at this nation through what I'm seeing in the media. What are you saying? What are you saying, God, and what is your wisdom? I'm going to wait at wisdom's doorway, like it says in Proverbs, every day to hear the word. So, God, what are you saying over the United States? And I feel like there is a shift that is coming where there will be a mighty demonstration of the power of God that is unprecedented. It hasn't been seen before, and there is going to continue to be a shaking of the pride of man because God is wanting to exalt himself and the glory of the Lord. Lord. And I just kept seeing the other day the wisdom of God branded over the nation um, of the United States. And I feel like that is a, is what is partly in the heart of God, that he's, he's wanting the, the people of God in the U.S. Um, in this new era to rise up and to be carrying the wisdom of God to bring reformation 
And so right now the enemy's found landing strips. He's found areas where he can come and he can land and he can steal, kill and destroy. But there is hope for the U.S. There's hope for the nations because of who we live in, Mm -hmm. where we live, where we're seated. And I believe truly that if we continue to partner with the Lord in what he's doing, that we will see mighty reformation. Wow. There's obviously um, forces in the unseen realm. And a lot of times we, um, we get mixed up, you know, like we are taught that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against these spirits and the un- unseen dimension. But we get mixed up sometimes. And so we start kind of battling against uh, personalities or against, you know, different people or even the people of nations when it's actually a spirit in- involved. And I feel that like, I mean, it's absolutely true. I mean, it's can be proven through scripture that the enemy actually gets no power except what we give him. So he needs a landing strip of sin to be able to do anything. So in a nation such as the United States, such as Australia, such as any other nation in, in the world, I believe as the church is positioned, so goes the nation. So if we're seeing um, horrific things going on in the nations, then we have to look at the church and see what, what's going on here. And so as believers, I believe that we need to contend for the destiny of nations. And mm-hmm. I've been hearing from um, a few prophets from different nations and different positions um, prophesying that the U.S. will lose its lead as a lead nation, um, which um, you know could be very healthy perhaps for the nation. Um, but they're also saying to be um, to be replaced with China. And of course, we love China, we love the Chinese, but what we don't love is the spirit of control, oppression, and communism um, that has held people captive in that in that nation for for decades. And so I feel that as believers, we need to be very careful about what we're we're judging and even what we're desiring um, to see of another nation, um, that we do not want to see America, you know, oppressed or taken over by some control spirit, a communist spirit, because if it does, other nations will follow. The free world, other nations in the free world will follow. And um, so I believe that we really need to gather together and pray, whether you love the U.S. or not, in the midst of all the mistakes that have been done, um, that the the United States has also really stood for the fulfillment of people's dreams and and getting behind people's dreams and and getting in the trenches with people who help them to see it happen and even helping other nations in their time of crisis and things like that. And so we, we cannot lose that place but we have to come into what God has and I, I, I keep reflecting on how God's people were overnight overnight they went into oppression in Babylon for 70 years because of carelessness and Jeremiah and other prophets of course were prophesying the warning about it and and trying to get people to turn and you know prophesying redemptively too he says I've even come to give you a future and a hope and and um, you know just prophesying um, you know if you make the right choice a good end will come but this is this is what is out there this is what's available this is what's going to happen and I don't think that God's people really believed the prophets they didn't believe that it was as serious as it was and so Israel got overtaken by the most brutal control nation in the day was Babylon and they were 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 seized overnight and lived in that oppression for 70 years and that is, um, if you think about it, um, you know, your children, for, for example, living 70 years under oppression, that's their whole life practically. And so we need to take these warnings seriously. And even no matter what nation you're in, you need to pray for your nation's destiny to be protected. But I would also like just make an appeal for some help right now for the U.S. is to pray because there there is 
Whatever happens to the USA right now is going to greatly impact the rest of the world for good or for evil. And so we need it to be aligned with God. We need this nation to be back in alignment with God. And we need every nation to be back in alignment with God. And especially in um, nations that had a, um, a biblical foundation, we need to pray because they're not even called Christian nations anymore. They're, you know, we're, we're called multicultural nations. We don't even call ourselves Christian nations, but uh, the Muslims call themselves Muslim nations, right? Yes. And so we are losing some, some sight of who we are, and we need to get that back. So we just want to make an appeal, and I'd, I'd love to invite you to uh, the firewallusa.com. And I know that Canada, uh, Canada has a really good firewall as well. They're set up by friends of ours. Um, it's called CanadianFirewall.ca. And do you know of one in Australia or a, I, a prayer movement that people can, can get connected to? Because Australia really needs prayer right now. Um, mm -hmm. Also for, for the great move of the Spirit. God's got great redemptive purpose over Australia. So um, we just want to encourage you as believers to find out in your nation what the prayer prayer movement is where where is the intercession if there is no intercession go and start one go and start a movement because i believe only going to god in prayer right now is going to is going to safeguard us i believe we have to go back to god back to his heart and cry out on the mercy seat for his mercy and that's for every nation um because like you know, you can point your finger at one nation, but like then you'd have to point it back at yourself. And it would be the same with any, like China, for example. It's a beautiful nation. It has a godly destiny on it. So we have to look for that and, and, and really cheer that on and not judge it, but pray for its breakthrough and pray for it to, to rise up in Jesus and for everything else to go, go off. So we need to pray for the nations. And when Jesus went into the temple and drove out the money changers' tables, what he said, he said, my father's house is a house of prayer for the nations, yes. but you have made it a den of thieves. And so um, I just want to encourage those of you who are not praying for nations yet to pray for nations. And mm -hmm. Lana, I just, see, I just see right now just prayer movements rise up everywhere and they're praying for nations. And it, it is going to bring in the glory because God's going to be made real. The truth will be made real in every nation. So yeah, yeah, that's so good. Even this week, Patricia and I are sitting with the Lord, and um, I, I was asking him what I always do: "What's on your heart today?" One of the things that he said to me was, "Lana, I am birthing in the nations the greatest prayer movements that have ever been Come seen." On. And I, I believe that even when you were speaking just then, I was I had this stirring in my spirit, you know, that there could be people watching that are saying, oh, well, what can I do? You know, what can I, I'm just a stay-at-home mom or I'm just a, you know, a teacher. And I just kept hearing those words, I'm just a. But I want to just echo um, what you were saying, Patricia, that, you know, everybody out there, like you as a child of God, like as you pray in your home, in your living room, as you decree, as you intercede, as you stand in the gap, like you are part partnering with the Holy Spirit to yeah. bring a shift, to bring a change. And I feel like even though um, we're in this shaking time and there's a time of, it's a very serious hour where we have to be in this place that we've been talking about of alignment and cleansing and purifying. But also I believe that it's a place of awakening where God is wanting to wake up his people and say, hey, the power of the Spirit lives in you, that as you pray for your nation, as you decree that you are standing in this place to usher in what God is wanting to do on the earth. And so I just want to encourage those of you, because I, I felt this feeling of almost um, insignificance or people feeling like, oh my gosh, it's too big. Everything I'm seeing out there, I'm not sure what I can do. And so I want to encourage you with even what with Patricia said, like join the firewall. I've joined and I've been praying uh, continually, um, but the prayer is powerful. And I feel like there are going to be many movements that are going to be arising in this hour, like many of you are already feeling that heavy anointing to um, intercede more than ever, because this is the hour to really not only fight, but to birth with the Holy Spirit what he's, um, he's doing in the earth. And we're creating a tipping point with our prayers. So like every prayer we add to the basket is creating yeah. weight in the spirit. And it says in James uh, 5, 
in verse 16 it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. And so we see here, it says, here's a man with a nature just like just like you, just like me. And yet he was able to shift things in the spirit. He was able to release the power of God for, for transformation. And so you have the same God. Not only do you know the same God as Elijah, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, but you have him in you. So how much more, right? So we want to encourage you to pray. Um, Lana, I want you to share a little bit about your uh, prophetic training. And I just want to say is that, you know, I want to see the whole body grow strong, not like a crooked tree, but a straight tree, right? That's my passion <laughs> is to see people grow strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And um, your your heart and your character and your uh, uh, honor of the word just excites me. And of course, your prophetic gifting. And I would love people to be mentored and trained by you. And I know that you have a course coming up very soon. I want you to share a little bit about that. And of course, your new book about the words for this era. Um, that's coming out really soon. And I'd like you to share um, uh, about those and also your Facebook, how people can get connected to you. Because I'm, I'm telling you, um, you want great mentors in your life. And Lana is one of those. She's got great things to impart. So did you want to share a little bit about your course and your book? Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have a, an online school that we will be uh, launching in September. Uh, it will be called uh, Keep the Fire Burning, and uh, it'll be a nine-week school that will really um, equip you in uh, a lot of these things that we're talking about, so how to discern the times and the seasons, um, how to uh, walk in intimacy with the Lord, how to keep the fire burning. There'll be a, a quite a significant module on um, what it means to minister to the Lord and uh, and to live in the fear of the Lord and the awe and wonder. There'll be another uh, module on um, living in the wisdom of God and walking in the wisdom of God. But really our heart is the Lord told us to create a space for people to come in, not only to be equipped and, uh, and to be mentored, but also to really just receive a greater impartation um, of revelation and the fire of God uh, for what is coming. So that'll be coming out in September uh, it'll be two sessions a week for nine weeks and we'll have lots of different guest uh, speakers as well that will be coming in. So uh, you can keep an eye on our website, which is lanavorza.com uh, and Facebook for that. Um, and yes, I also have a new book coming out in September. It's called I Heard, I Hear, I keep getting it wrong. I Hear the Lord Say New Era. And, uh, and Patricia, I had the honor of Patricia and uh, Chuck Pierce doing the, um, the forewords for this book, which is such a great honor. And this book is really, um, I think it's, it's 10, 12 chapters. Uh, each uh, chapter is basically a key that God has given me for this new era, what we can expect and how to position ourselves. I'm very, very passionate on hearing the word of the Lord, that not only hearing it, what do I do with it when I hear it? How do I uh, engage with what God is saying? So uh, that will be out in September. And, uh, and you can keep an eye on our Facebook pages. I've, I've got two, Lana Vorza. Um, can I just say 50,000 uh, 50, followers on one, over 100,000 on the other. Why do I say that? Because there are scammers out there that are taking people's money on behalf of me. Please, um, yeah, I will never contact you and ask you for money. <laughs> So um, please look at the, the amount of followers and when the pages were created um, so you can follow along with us. Thank you so much. I just really do want to encourage you to connect with Lana and her ministry. Um, it will make you stronger in the spirit. It will fortify you and uh, bring you closer to the heart of God. So thank you so much for joining us in the conversation room today. Um, we want you to carry on the conversation so that if there are things that, that really triggered you, things that spoke to you, go and share those with others. Um, you know, in, in, in Malachi, uh, it, it, it says, 
says that, that those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. And there was a book of remembrance written about them. It's just so amazing the way the Lord loves that. So just go and talk about Jesus. Talk about his truth. Share it with others. Strike up some conversations. We want everyone to be talking about Jesus Christ day in, day out. I mean, is there anything else you would need to talk about? right? So uh, go and strike up some conversations and join the firewall. Uh, get on there and pray. Just even if it's just an hour a week, um, it would be so helpful because we are going to see God do great things. But it is conditional. It is conditional on our partnership with him. And he has told us to pray and put a protection around the nation. So it's firewallusa.com. Dot com. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lana. And uh, have um, a good day there, Lana. And for us, a Thank good you. evening. Okay. God bless. <laughs>